All right, so this is just going to be a quick video to show you guys what I have done to improve the performance on the GPD Pocket. And uh, yeah, let's just go right into it. So the first thing I've done is actually update the BIOS and I'll leave the link to that in the description below. So it's actually pretty straightforward. It's a zip file. You unpack it, you get a folder. Inside the folder, you get a bunch of files. You want to right click and run as admin on the update underscore win dot bad file and it will do its thing. Once it's done, it will tell you either fail or pass. And I recommend reading the readme PDF file that is in the folder itself. Um, just to understand what's going on. But basically you want to make sure that it is fully charged up and that you don't have uh, USB type C power plugged in just in case as anything might go wrong when it restarts. If it does fail, do not shut down or restart your device. Make sure you never do that if it fails because you might break your device for good. So what you want to do is, is actually rerun the program until it passes and once that's done, you're good to go. Restart the device and let it do its thing. Leave it for about five minutes just to be safe. I didn't, I left it for around a minute and uh, once I saw the LED was off, I went ahead and pressed the button to turn it back on. It turned back on just fine and it was ready to go. Once that's done and you're back on your desktop, you want to go ahead and shut down your device and turn it back on and keep hitting the delete key until you enter the BIOS. So once you're back to your desktop, you want to go ahead and shut down your device completely and then go ahead, turn it back on and keep hitting the delete key until you enter the BIOS. There we go. And once you're on this display, you want to turn your device into portrait mode and open it up all the way up. And if you're wondering why it's like that, and that's probably because the display was meant to be a portrait display. And that's why the BIOS reads it and displays it like that. So the next thing you want to do is actually open it up all the way so you can have a better grip on it and uh, have better visual on what you're doing. And I would recommend getting an external keyboard or an air mouse like this one right here. And basically it's an air mouse slash keyboard and it runs off a USB. Make sure it runs off USB because if it's Bluetooth, you can't run it on here. And then you want to go ahead and just change the settings like so. You have enter, escape and everything and you'll be easily accessing everything using an external keyboard. Because if you try to do this, it's going to be really awkward because you're doing it in a different orientation. It will just save you more time. So to tweak the BIOS, I recommend watching the Fox's video on how to tweak the GPD Win on how to change the settings in the BIOS to increase performance and make it run much faster for a longer period of time. So what you're going to be doing here is uh, you want to open this up, open up the Fox's video and I'll leave links for that in the description below and take a look at the description as well because I'll leave the list of settings that have changed in the bio. So you don't really have to watch this video, but I really recommend watching this video. He really nicely explains everything about what you're changing, what the settings are, what not to change. And he puts a lot of warnings on a bunch of settings just to warn you that if you change those that you might break your unit. But basically what I have done here and what he has done in his video is you're going to be increasing the CPU throttle point. So your CPU will run at max speed for a longer period of time. And once it hits 85 degrees, which is what I have set, and that's actually when it will damn clock itself to cool itself down. You'll also be increasing the GPU VRAM and overclocking your RAM and changing the timings as well. And I pretty much have went all out on the settings. Then I just went ahead and did all the settings to the max and see what happens. And in the end, I was actually able to get everything working with maximum performance. And once you're done everything, make sure you go ahead and quit and save and go back into your windows. And once you're inside windows, you're good to go. Everything is running just fine. Now you'll see a great increase in performance, a drastic increase in performance, especially games. There are many games that have tried to run and it was impossible to get playable frame rates at any resolution or settings. And after that, I was actually able to get a really nice gain of performance in a lot of games, which I'll show you in just a bit after we're done talking about tweaks and everything. But the other thing that you'll appreciate about the BIOS update, it will actually fix a few things here and there, especially when it comes to the fan spinning when you're charging the device. So there will be a bunch of fixes that will happen to the device, which is really nice on top of having all the unlock settings to you. The next thing you want to do is actually run a script that will disable a bunch of Windows 10 telemetry settings and functions and a bunch of things that are pretty much useless. It will disable a lot of privacy stuff that takes information from you and sends it to Microsoft and a whole bunch of settings that will greatly increase the performance of this thing. I will leave links for that as well in the description below. A very simple tutorial on Reddit on how to do that. And basically it is a text file that you will download and run into PowerShell and it will change a whole bunch of settings and a bunch of things that will increase your privacy on this device, which should give you a boost of performance and function. And one last thing you want to do is go ahead and edit your registry and enable the power settings in your device. By default, if you go to the power options in Windows 10, you will only have balanced mode. But once you do a quick edit in the registry, you will unlock these other options, performance and power saving mode, once you change those settings and restore your device. And once you're done all those tweaks, 
you should be good to go. You'll have a whole bunch of performance. But there's actually two more things that you could do to increase the performance. One is use Throttle Stop. It's a program that you can research about. It basically will allow you to overclock your CPU or downclock it to whatever you want inside Windows. And that will also give you an increase of performance in CPU and GPU because they're both in the same chip. And um, yeah, if you want to do that, you could do that, but you can just stop right here and call it a day. But there's something that I recommend doing before so. And that would actually be to replace the thermal paste on the CPU with something much better and add some thermal pads. Now, I did want to include this portion of the video in this video where I show you step by step on how to do that. But I unfortunately cannot find my pack of thermal pads. So what I'm going to do is actually order some new ones and once they're in, I'll make that video. So stay tuned for the video where I will be opening it up, changing the thermal paste and adding some thermal pads and guiding you guys through the step by step process on how to open it up safely. But with that said, I will also leave some links for people who have done this mod. So look for it in the description below. And that's actually about it. So we have updated and tweaked the BIOS. We have tweaked Windows 10, enabled power settings. And there's one more thing that I should actually do. And that would be to change the Intel graphics settings to performance and not battery saving. And I'll show you that in just a bit here. It's pretty simple and straightforward. We also have Thrall Stop if you want to overclock or downclock. And lastly, in a future video, we'll show you how to install new thermal paste and add some thermal pads to optimize the heat dissipation on this thing. If you already have this device, you have probably already done this before, but basically you want to go to your desktop, right click and go to graphics properties and the Intel graphics control panel will open up and you want to go to 3D and you want to change it into performance mode and then go back, go to power settings and disable both extended battery life for gaming and display saving technology. And that should help you squeeze out all that performance that you're missing out on, on top of the tweaks that we have already done. And that's actually about it for the tweaks. So let's go ahead and play some games and see how they perform compared to before. Let's go. All right, so I have showed you only one game right now, and that would be Trackmania Stadium. And you have saw the results before and after. Now we're actually getting up to 720p with low settings before we were running 740, and the frames were just really low, like around 20 FPS. But now we can play it very nicely on 720p with very playable frame rates. And I'm only gonna show you this game right now in this video. One, because I don't want this video to be too long. And two, is that I actually wanna test it and see what the results are like after I do the thermal paste mod. Because as you guys know, after a short gaming session, this thing will heat up and the frames will drop once again like before, which is not good. So we want to keep it at good stable temperatures so the frame rates don't drop back to what it was before we have done the mods. So for now, you guys have solved the performance and uh, it's very similar to the GPD win because again, they are running the very similar hardware except this thing has eight gigabytes of RAM. But yeah, that's actually pretty much it for this video. If you wanna see what this thing might be able to do after you do the mods, you can watch my GPD win videos. I'll leave links for them in the description below. There are about 30 games that I have tested and they're all running at 720p, lowest settings, and you can see what kind of frame rates we were getting. Most of them were really nice and playable, very nice frame rates or pretty decent for what it is. So yeah, stay tuned for two or three more videos. One will be the thermal mod, two will be the gaming test after we do the thermal mod. Maybe that will be in one video. And three will be the final review where we will be testing out this thing in various real world situations. So yeah, that's actually pretty much it for this video. So hopefully I've helped anyone out there that is trying to understand and get an idea of how to increase the performance on this thing. I don't see a lot of new friendly posts or tutorials anywhere that will explain what you need to do. But what I have done here is actually grab everything and shoved it into one video, which is this one. I didn't go too much into detail because I don't want this video to be too long. And most of the stuff is pretty simple and straightforward once you visit the links that I have put in the description below. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And that's actually pretty much it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe if you like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone. I know that made no sense. All right, bye. <laughs>